My name is John Mahler. I write a tire column for the Toronto Star wheeled section. I'm actively involved in tire testing and evaluation and I'm very concerned about tire safety and vehicle safety. We're here today at the Continental Tire Proving Ground in Brimley, Michigan, just outside of Sault Ste. Marie, to evaluate what tire fitment works best on a small MFAV or mini school bus. This concern about tire fitment was raised by three mothers in New Brunswick who lost sons in a tragic collision several years ago. I lost my son on January 12th, 2008, when he was coming home from a basketball game in Moncton. Um, he was in a 15-passenger van that was ill-fitted with all-season worn scallop tires. On January 12th, 2008, uh, my son, along with seven of his peers and a teacher, were tragically killed while um, coming home from a basketball game in inclement weather. And the um, vehicle transporting my child and his friends uh, was equipped with um, all-season tires. January the 11th, when my son left for a game, for a basketball game from the school in a 15-passenger van, which he never had a chance to return back home and eight people were dead. The inquest resulting from that collision recommended winter tires on all school vehicles. There's been some concern about this because in New Brunswick the government had passed a law requiring winter tires on school vehicles. However, in actual fact, it turned out that the fitment they used was winter tires on the rear only and all season tires on the front. They agitated vigorously for Transport Canada to do an evaluation on the proper tire fitment for these school vehicles to see what was safest. Transport Canada and the province of New Brunswick did not do that test. Continental Tire stepped in and volunteered to do this and invited the three mothers here to the proving ground to watch the evaluation and process. So we're going to see what works best and what is safest. At a speed of 60 kilometers per hour with winter tires on all six wheels, two up front and four at the rear, the average stopping distance from several runs was 38.7 meters. After replacing the two front wheels with all season tires, but leaving the winter tires on the rears, the tests are repeated from the same speed, 60 kilometers per hour. This time, the average stopping distance was 49.6 meters, which is 10.9 meters longer, a big increase of over 28%. Repeating the tests from 80 kilometers per hour provided similar results, confirming the superior stopping ability with winter tires on all the bus wheels. Lateral cornering is measured in G's or G-force. This measurement can tell us which tire grips best when going around a corner. Driving through this corner at 60 kilometers per hour with all winter tires created 0.417 Gs. The bus was stable and the driver had no problem staying in his lane. The front winter tires were then replaced by all season tires and Gs measured again. This time at 60 kilometers again, the bus understeers into the other lane and clips the cones in the process. The G-force was only 0.181 which dramatically illustrates the low level of grip on this snow-covered surface. In an emergency situation, braking and steering is sometimes the only solution. 
This brake and avoid action is totally dependent on the amount of traction provided by the tires. Not enough traction and the obstacle will be hit. Entering at 60 kilometers an hour with winter tires on all six wheels, the driver brakes, then steers to miss the obstacle. The maneuver was successful because the winter tires provided sufficient traction to slow down the bus and change direction. Let's see what happens when the front winter tires are replaced with all season tires. Entering again at 60 kilometers an hour, the driver brakes and then steers. The bus understeers due to the lack of grip on the front tires and crashes into the obstacle. The front all season tires did not provide the necessary grip to brake and avoid. Well, we've done our testing here today and we've received the results and also seen the results. It is very, very obvious that winter tires on all axles, all corners of the vehicle is the safest, best configuration. It was obvious in braking, the distance to stop was significantly shorter. It was obvious on cornering, the vehicle was more stable at a higher speed than it was on the mixed configuration. In accident avoidance, it was significantly obvious that the winter tires made a huge difference. The vehicle was able to steer around a problem in the road. If it was a moose, a stalled car, a child, the vehicle was able to brake and steer around it as opposed to hitting it. That's a huge, huge bonus for the driver and for road safety in general. And the fantastic news is that uh, we've just received word that the province of New Brunswick is changing their policy and they have agreed now with our theory and our proof and our testing that the winter tires are best on all corners of the vehicle and they will make that standard now throughout the province. This is a victory for us because we've been putting so much pressure on the government for the last four months to finally realize that they needed to have the proper testing done to get these vehicles equipped with the proper tires for the safety of the children. Well, it's a victory. It's a victory that uh, they are implementing that, that policy. It's a success. The New Brunswick government has changed their policy and implemented that winter tires should be put on these vehicles and right now we feel it is a victory and we're very very happy today is a victory day for children all across Canada and hopefully North America will uh, benefit from this too